We'll start here. The calendar will bleep at us, but that's okay. Alrighty. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a recap of Composing for Change Part 12, Engage. And today, episode which has taken us four separate streams uh, we had a key insight that working with the original seven note do re mi scale and the new hpo2 seven note scale has expanded our work methods and has expanded our chord vocabulary for example this diagram here is hot off the press Our new language says when we have a new scale, the first thing we have to do is enumerate all the chords. For example, 712s. What do we mean by that? Here's an example right here. This is a brand new seven note scale, and we had to count how many 1-1 one, one chords are there? Six. How many 1-2 chords are there? Seven. How many, etc. And that's different because in the first scale that we ever worked with, way over here in its chord enumeration area, which looks like this. There are six one ones, six one twos, six two ones, and we didn't even bother filling all this table in yet because way back in the olden days, this wasn't how we did it. But now in the new improved system, this is one of the first things we do, six, seven, seven. So there's different numbers of chords. So when we say that we enumerate the chords, what we mean is there are seven one twos, there are seven one threes, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And there are 19 possible things to count. Then we spell the chords. So we said, well, the first one two chord begins on a C and it's a C one two. Again, how do we know that? Well, then we come over here to our mural reflection diagram. We say start on the C, and then uh, there's a one and a two. So that is one of the one, two chords that is possible. Then we type it. What chord type is it? Well, we say, well, it's a minor tonic. How do we know that? It's got the root, it's got a none, and it's got a mode. So anytime you have a mode plus no active, it's a tonic. Yay. But that's not all. No, that's not all. Then we have to display the chord. What does display mean? Well, it means you take it from this kind of tabular representation. There's our C12 in purple right there. And you display it way over here where it says C12 because reasons. Historically, this is how we figured chords out, but also reasons. Like, what is the reflection of a C12? It's an E21. So in our diagram we now show an example there's a little screen snippet shot and then finally we have what we call god i hate when you do that to me we have scoring it now what does scoring mean it means now you got to take it and so you can play it so after all that work that it took us to get from way up here in the chord enumeration area which is pure sp spreadsheet there that one right there c12 we get to where we can just play it and verify that that is you know a c d flat e flat just like it says down here c d flat e flat so anyway that is our kind of updated chord vocabulary system and so we really spent the bulk of this part, which we called engage, was just to get engaged and flesh out, flesh out this diagram here. Because to be honest, the key milestone so far is that we got all 120 chords spelled and typed. But we've only got a, a minor handful in the display area, and we have a we have a minor handful uh, actually added here where it says added the sheet. So we've got about 40 some out of 120 on this side and even less than that. Nevertheless, in having worked out this template, now we, we have a place for all this stuff to get put in. 
uh, down here, uh, we're ready to go, ready to go. So that was a major accomplishment. So we made the vocabulary concept diagram, we continued the reference sheet, and we continued our chord sort variations. What are those? Well, one of the main drivers for finishing HPO2, Heptatonic 2, was because we really want to compose in it. And this is, uh, we have one composition called Darkness 1, and this one is called Listening, or probably going to be called Listening 1. It should be called Listening 1. And this is what it sounds like so far. And we're going to play what it sounds like so far, and that'll take us home. So here we go. And what we like about it is how the third line consonants keeps getting higher while the second line kind of begins to lag it more and more. And frankly, the, we like the beginning and we kind of like the end and the middle needs to be tuned. So um, we'll just play the part we like again, which is, where is it? It's this part where the five fives come into play at the bottom. And I think that's, again, because you can really hear the third line playing against the second line. So our ideas for next time are to keep working. Keep working with the reference materials. We need to finish up those chord displays and the chord scoring. Uh, keep working with our chord sort variations that you just heard. And then we've got some other ideas here. A shout out to Mr. Spatz who stopped by. We appreciate you. Tune in next time to see what happens. Do take care. Do come back. And do keep on streaming. <laughs>